again, it's a little bit of a uh, different scripture passage to be looking at for uh, an Easter Sunday morning. But I hope and pray that as we go through this passage of scripture, uh, you will see and God will reveal in your own mind uh, what he's revealed to mine uh, as I've looked at it with fresh eyes. And I've just entitled my sermon this morning, We Can Claim Healing Because of Easter. There is something so powerful about what happened at Easter, isn't there? All of us here this morning are familiar with the scenes of Easter. We know the events of Good Friday, where Jesus was beaten, whipped, and hung upon the cross. However, there are still places across the world where many people will attend church this weekend, perhaps for the first time, to hear about Jesus' sacrifice and the hope he has made available for all of us. I wonder, have you ever stopped to reflect on the question of why did Jesus suffer in this way, and what difference can this make to us today? Have you ever wondered, could there have been another way that Jesus could have suffered for us without the agony and suffering of the cross? We read earlier from Luke's Gospel where Jesus says these words in Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. Now, if you were to read these words in that last phrase from the King James Version, it would read like this. I have come to set liberty, or set at liberty, those that are bruised. And for a few moments, it is this, these very words from the King James Version that I would like us to look at. It is those who are bruised. That Jesus refers to, that I want to like us to think about and reflect upon, because it is for those and others like them that Jesus suffered the anguish of the cross of Calvary. It was for us who are bruised that he was raised to be the victor over death in the grave. And that is why today on Easter Sunday 2017, we again celebrate. Now, a few years ago, uh, while we were training in Winnipeg, Shalene and Sarah and Philip and myself had an opportunity, along with the rest of the students and the staff of CFOT, to attend a minor league baseball game. Now, we were all pretty excited, but as you can imagine, I would say that nobody was more excited than Philip and his little buddy Benjamin. We used to pick them up from Linden Christian School. They were the only two that attended the Christian school in Winnipeg. Everybody else attended a public school. And uh, we pick them up, and once, once they found out that we were going on this event and outing as a, as a uh, college, and the kids were coming with us, they were ecstatic. The first thing they said was, I've got to find my bob glove. Because if we're going to go to a baseball game, I've got to have my bob glove in case I get that fly ball. If something comes down, I've got to get it. And if you've ever been to a baseball game, you know there are a few simple rules. And the first and most important one is what? Be mindful of wayward balls. They don't understand sometimes. The player has no control. Well, needless to say, I experienced firsthand the importance of this fact a little too late. Now, I was paying more attention to Philip, and let's be honest, I was probably paying more attention to the ballpark food that I was holding my lap than I was at the ball game. I was enjoying my french fries. If I go to a hockey stadium, if I go to a ballpark, if I can get french fries, that's my deal. Leave me with the fries and I'm good. Philip was sitting next to me at the ball game, and I knew nothing until I hear one of the staff members say, Watch out for the ball! And when I looked up, it was coming right from my stomach, and it gave me a good hit. I didn't have time to react, but I'm going to tell you, I felt and I remembered that bruise and that mark that I had on my stomach for weeks on end. Now, Philip 
was the proud owner of a new ball. Well, or used a couple of times. It had a couple of hits on it. You could see the wax in the, in the ball. You could see the marks of the bat and everything else. So all wasn't lost. Daddy got a bruise. But Philip was, had a new ball that he claimed as his own. Now, I tell you that funny story, but here's the reality. Bruises appear in all shapes and sizes. Some bruises come up quickly, which this one did. Others can take several days to appear. They occur when one or more of the small veins break under the skin due to a hard knock or a collision with a baseball. And blood leaks out and is trapped underneath the skin. And that's the reality of what a bruise is. That's, where, that's how it happens. That's how it forms. Bruises start off red, but quickly turn blue and purple as they begin to fade, and then they turn green and yellow before they disappear entirely. And I experienced all those colors as my bruise was healing. But here's the, here's the truth I want us to take from this this morning. God has a plan for healing. However, unlike the bruise that I received at the ball game that was quite visible, some bruises cannot be seen. It could be the pain of broken relationships with someone we care about. Like having a bruise on the heart causes pain when you hear their name or when you remember how they are no longer with you. There are many millions of people today who are suffering the loss of loved ones and there's that bruise in their heart. The family circle has been broken. They can no longer commune with them in an earthly manner. They're gone. It could be the pain of anxiety and stress caused by a lack of finances, a lack of food, lack of employment. It may be more general pain, an illness or a physical ailment that we carry and contend with. The truth is we are all carrying bruises of some sort. We all have areas of pain in our lives that we are trying to heal or are hoping, praying will go away. So what was the bruises Jesus was referring to when he said, I have come to set at liberty those that are bruised. The biggest bruise the human race received can be traced back to the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God, their relationship with God was broken and something spiritual inside of them was broken and bruised. Sin damaged the relationship with God and made it become much harder for them to communicate with God. They were expelled from the Garden of Eden and could no longer talk and see God's face. And from that point onwards, the relationship and all of the humankind's relationship with God has been broken. And the bruise of death and separation left a permanent mark on our soul. The Bible teaches that this bruise marks all human beings. Consequently, one trespass has resulted in condemnation for all people. Romans 5 and 18. Spiritually speaking, we are all bruised by the impact that sin has on our lives. And this is where the Easter story can impact each of us today. Jesus came to heal us of those bruises. He came to free us so that we could have again, once again enjoy a loving relationship with God. He did this by accepting the bruise that was meant for us, taking it upon his body at the cross on Good Friday. Isaiah 53 and 10 tells us, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put on him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper his hand. Jesus came to stand in front of the collision point of sin and take on the bruise that was meant for us. The very first promise of this plan can be found in Genesis 3.15. It shall bruise their head, and, shall bruise, and they shall bruise its, his heel. This was God's good plan, that a Savior would come and take on the sins of the world, and through his sacrifice we, will, we all can receive everlasting life. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53 and 5. Jesus' death on the cross was the healing plan of God to restore a broken relationship with him, giving us a spirit so we can have forgiveness 
Restore friendship and, most importantly, eternal life. Now, the Bible teaches that Jesus defeated the power of sin and death on the cross. And that now, through him, we too can have life free from the power of sin. Romans 5 and 17. Yet, despite all of these wonderful truths, we all experience the pain of living in a fallen world. One only needs to take a look at society to see the world around us is bruised. Now, if you want some interesting information about people who are suffering mental illness or going through these situations in life, you need not turn any further than the Canadian Mental Health Association's website. And I, I, I visited the website to try to find out exactly what bruising people are facing in their lives. These are the statistics. It says approximately 8% of adults will experience major depression at some time in their lives. It is estimated that 3.2 million youth between the ages of 12 and 19 are at risk for developing depression. These are some staggering statistics, folks. The website also says that suicide among, accounts for 24% of all deaths among 15 to 24 years of age, and 16% among 25 to 44 years of age. And it's the leading cause of death in young people, suicide. And we live in a world where there are so many things, people are very abusive. It may not be in the physical sense as much as it used to be. People have gone to the web, the Snapchat, you're bullying. There are young girls and young boys who are so knocked down in society and beaten up by society, by their peers, told they're of no value. The only way they feel out is to do away with their life. Christ came to heal those bruises. Can we heal those bruises? And we as a fellowship, as a body of believers, we need to be out proclaiming the good news of the gospel that Jesus saves, that Jesus keeps. We need to proclaim that to the young youth of our society today. They need to be told that they're loved. They need to be told that they're special. And when they come through these doors, they need to be made felt welcome. We need not to be looking at them with jeering eyes. They move around the sanctuary. I was so excited this morning to see those two little girls, Carol. They do my heart good. To see Matthew, to see Stephanie, Sarah, and Philip. This place could be packed with young people. He's going to rely on us to open our hearts, open our minds. We no longer need to sit in our pew and think that this is a nice society club. I mean, yes, I'm going down a rabbit trail this morning, but I believe God is speaking to me this morning to, me this morning to do this. If we do not invite young people into this place, the doors will lock. The doors will shut of this church. So whatever we have in our hearts, whatever we have in our minds, if we're so staunch in our beliefs that this place cannot be dirty, if this place cannot be loud, if this place can't have movement of the children, we close the doors now. Because we need children in this church. It's a sign of our today. They're alone our future. We need them today. So we need to open our hearts and open our minds and be accepting of the youth. We need to change some of their worship styles. We need to be revitalized this morning. We need to be healed. Because we have hurts, we have bruises. And they don't heal quickly, folks. They don't heal quickly. But I believe that we can experience healing. <laughs> the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ in our own hearts and our own lives today. Now back to my sermon this morning. Jesus addressed the issue of our ongoing bruises in the Gospel of John. He taught us that the blessing of the kingdom of God has already begun but is not yet fully released. 1 Corinthians 13 and 12 tells us, For now we see only a reflection in the mirror, 
Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. While we wait for the full expression of God's kingdom, we have to face the challenges of receiving new bruises. But we can do so with the help of Jesus. Philippians 4 and 13 reminds us that I can do all things. For who? Christ, who gives me strength. The truth of the matter is that we don't have to look very far to realize that lives are still clearly affected by the results of sin. And it is evident when we see so much pain, suffering, and death all around. But the good news is that Christ came to bring healing to those who are hurt. This morning I want us to look at three types of healing. There is immediate healing. I don't think we love immediate healing. The Bible uses many images to describe the nature of God, such as a gardener, fire. I love the shepherd. He's the shepherd. And many more. But one of the most prevalent images found in the New Testament is Christ as the physician. Some bruises, like hematomas, are so traumatic the body cannot heal it by itself. We need a doctor to carefully operate on the bruised area. And it is the same with our soul. We need Christ, the physician's help to remove the damage of sin from our lives. On the cross, people mocked Jesus and said, he, can even, he, he can't even save himself. That's the point. He wasn't there to save himself. He died to save us. The meaning of the word salvation includes welfare. Prosperity, deliverance, safety, all are pictures of healing and cure for the pain of this world. When we accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior of our lives, God forgives us, heals our broken relationships with Him, and gives us the Holy Spirit. And that's amazing. Folks. For those of us who experience the Holy Spirit's power, it's an amazing thing. It transforms lives. And we, we, we sometimes today want to experience those healings like in Mark's day only. Mark records that Jesus touched. Others touched Jesus' garment and they were instantly healed. Well, you may not find physical healing in that instant moment. But we can find spiritual healing in those moments there. Just by reaching out and touching him, we can experience that healing. The second type of healing is a progressive healing. The ongoing work of the Holy Spirit in our lives also brings about healing in our lives. There are many stories in the history of the Salvation Army of people being miraculously healed in Salvationist meetings, of people bring, being delivered from their drunkenness, drug addictions, or receiving physical healing such as the immediate removal of incurable diseases and illness. One of the most frequent forms of healing takes place when people join a Christian community. And God begins to repair the brokenness in their lives. You know, we meet here on Sunday morning and Sunday evening. It's not ritual. It's important. We need to come as brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to be a band of believers who, who thrive on encouraging each other. And telling each other of the stories of God and His goodness in our lives. And God does something miraculous in our lives every day. I fail to believe that we have to look back 20 years, 30 years to see the goodness of God because He does something good in our lives every day. We only stop and we look at it. One of the most frequent forms of healing takes place when people join a community, like I said. God begins to repair the brokenness in their lives. And we can testify to having seen the power of Christ's love restoring people back to their families. Employment and society through the law of care and service of others. And if you were to go to the mainland, where it's a little different, the army has a different format than what it does here in Newfoundland. The army is very big and social on the mainland. And we had the opportunity and the privilege, I guess more of an eye opener, as we trained in Winnipeg to experience some of these firsthand. And to sit down and listen to some of the stories of people how their lives have been changed because they joined a Christian group, a community of believers. And yes, even the Salvation Army, how their lives have been changed. 
You can see it in their lives, that excitement, that joy, because they've experienced Jesus. And for those who persevere through this life without receiving any signs of actual healing, one thing to be sure. They have put their trust in Jesus. They will enter into a place where they will receive their ultimate healing. Revelation 21 4 refers to it as a place where there is no more death, no mourning, no crying, no pain. I'm looking forward to that morning or two. I'm looking forward to that place. Then there's the ultimate healing. The full expression of our healing will take place when we enter into heaven and we receive what the Bible calls a glorified body, one that cannot be bruised. As the Apostle Paul writes to the Corinthians church in 1 Corinthians 15, 42-44, so will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is shown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is shown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is shown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in natural body. In natural body. It is raised in spiritual body. The ultimate healing we will receive is when we get to be with God, in God's presence forever. Isaiah 65, 20, never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, an old man who goes not, does not live out his years. The one who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere child. The one who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accused. This morning, what has God been saying to you during this message? Is it time for you to come back into relationship with God? Are you carrying a bruise and we'd like Jesus to heal it today? I know the sermon is a lot focused a lot on the healing of sin. That's why Christ came. We're all sinners. Each and every one of us. Some of us have been redeemed through the precious blood of Jesus Christ because we've been asked to come into our lives and wash us to purify us. Is it time for you to come back into relationship with God this morning? Are you carrying a bruise and would like God to do it today? Maybe there's a physical bruise in your life. Maybe you need physical healing. Maybe there's bruises in the relationships that you've had. <coughs> you've let linger and linger and linger and it's festered. Well, this morning, God, we're going to heal in that situation this morning. For those that we've already prayed for this morning, they need physical healing. Yes, even some of them probably need spiritual healing. We can bring all of our bruises to Christ. He alone has the ultimate power to carry our pain and heal us. Easter shows us that he wants what he or that he wants to do that. He alone is the way back to God. And as we pray and seek God's grace and mercy, his healing power will flow into our life. We may experience a fantastic healing in an area of our brokenness. <coughs> or we may receive the strength to carry on through the pain. Knowing that Christ is our healer. And ultimately, he will stand, we will stand one day before him. We will stand before him and claim the victory over death and the grave this morning. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the healing that's come through your death and resurrection. We realize that you came to die on the cross of Calvary. He came to pay the price for our sins. Father, each and every one of us here this morning are sinners. Some of us have been saved by your grace. We've accepted that you are Lord, that you're Christ, you're our Redeemer, you're our salvation. And there are others this morning who may need to accept you as Lord and Savior of their life this morning. Father, I'm not sure where each and every one of these people walk this morning. There may be those here this morning who have been wearing the uniform for years and there's still hidden sins in their life. There might be bruises, there might be broken relationships, there might be healing that needs to take place, but 
Lord, you know what that healing is this morning. It may be those this morning who walked this journey for many, many of years. There are still bruises in your life, Father. I pray that this morning, if there's any bruises in our lives, you know what they are. You know the areas of our life that need healing. <clears throat> you know what we need, Father, because you know everything. We are your child. You love us, and you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, down on Calvary, Calvary for us. So this morning, in these more moments of reflection, I pray that we would indeed come for healing this morning if we need that healing. May we claim it through your resurrected Son. Father, move in our midst, we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.